Hello and welcome to Dominion 6 Rise of the Podcaster, your premier Dominion 6 podcast. I am one of the hosts, HP Munchcraft. With me are Sauron and Darkwolf. Next topic, uh, forts. So, Sauron, the video you game. Start it. All right, so I just wanted to briefly, because we were talking about the early game section before Darkwolf brought in Connie West. Uh, so, uh, fort placement is not something I guess that's really talked about. And I think it's Connie. an itch. I think I it's mean... an interesting uh, conversation. So, Picante. there's. The so, game. where do you place your forts? A lot of people think, like, oh, I'm just going to stick it on the highest uh, income province or on some province that has a bunch of sites. But I think where you place your forts and the fence is super interesting. And then there's like a strategy of fort spamming. Uh, so I think it's like an interesting conversation of like when do you want to do this stuff and uh, you know there's different strategies will do this. There's no like one shoe fits all thing for forts. It's kind of like you want to dynamically yeah, place your so, forts. So Sauron, I, I I gotta I gotta I gotta disagree with you here. I gotta I think the fort conversation is very boring unless you're looking at a map. Because yeah. the the concrete of where forts go matters a lot, but in abstract, it's like, well, you want, in general, your forts to be, you know, far enough away from each other so that they are defending your disparate lands, but you also want them to be near each other, enough to each other, so that they're mutually supporting, ideally, so that you can get a mage with maybe an item, maybe a boot or something, in between one and the other in a single turn so you don't have to have a bunch of guys sitting out vulnerable in transit and you can respond to threats uh quickly um but uh yeah so, but it's interesting yeah. because you know a lot of people think you know if i make a fort it has to be producing and that's not necessarily the case you should have an amount of forts that are producing but sometimes just throwing up a fort to make scouts i've said this a lot is, you know, a good play, or throwing up a fort to make even a line commander. You know, oh, I have an extra fort because I can pump out these guys, and now that I have this, I can, you know, throw in that scout, or throw in that line commander throw across my empire, because I have this extra fort that I systematically will use, but I'm not always using. And, it you know, forts give administration, so they boost your provinces. At worst, you're getting a very small income uh, exchange, but they also work as great defense because in order to take a province, you, if it has a fort in it, you have to break the fort, and then you have to swarm the fort. So it's a three-turn exchange. Heard it here for first, Sauron has officially endorsed fort spamming. But <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> no, so uh, what I did want to say is that uh, one other thing I've noticed about forts is that um, often you build a fort to defend a choke point, and a lot of times the way you will do that is building the fort on the choke point, but something I have noticed in a couple of games is that, uh, you know, the enemy has to take the choke point whether or not they take the fort, so a lot of times it's better to, like, have the fort in a province adjacent to the choke point, so you can always defend the choke point from the fort if you want to take that fight, but the enemy it doesn't take the choke in your fort in the same action they have to allocate troops to both defend the choke against potential uh you know other threats from elsewhere that you might have in addition to taking your choke uh in addition to taking your fort sorry so i i've noticed that that it is especially when you're under heavy pressure to defend chokes instead of just forting the choke brainlessly or mm -hmm. same thing with cave um provinces instead of you know, fording the cave entrance or immediately underground, uh, you fort the province next to the cave entrance because you'll always be able to fight on the cave entrance if the enemy wants to um, bring it that way. But you're not stuck that if they do take the fight on the cave entrance, it's not just like, well, they need to take this and then once they take it, uh, you know, they take the fort there and then, like, then they have that choke point and now you're in the other scenario. Um yeah, so I agree. Just a little yeah. little positioning trick. Positioning for sure matters, people, and what I, I, you're adjacent to. I think people in history figured that out like way before, and now now I'm just catching up with Dominion. So, 
Yeah, I also think like forts are interesting because um, so in certain expansion strategies, uh, people will talk about, oh, I want to do early forts. And this goes back to the earlier discussion. Right. So this will affect what commanders you're buying because you'll have, if you, depending on your strategy, if you're putting less gold in, you have more gold to spend on that early fort. And putting a fort up in expansion, if not multiple, can be game changing and change your how you're going to be playing the game and you'll you'll have different timings so like there's you have to like dynamically decide or figure out what whatever strategy you're doing like when are you going to do this if you're going to do it and you know thinking about when to make them and how many you can hold after expansion phase ends or what your goal is to you know enact your first war is all like an interesting conversation uh it's funny, a uh, player that we normally make fun of, Crumdum, he's a big proponent of recommending early forts, and it, he has, like, a cool strategy where he, he gets rid of mages, and, uh, you know, he just focuses on, on expansion and putting up early forts, and, you know, that's his way of playing, and I think that's a cool way you can play. The only problem that he gets himself into is he thinks it's the only way you can play in the optimal way, and he gets into vicious arguments about this, so it, it kind of distracts from, like, this cool strategy and alternative way you can play the early game. So I think highlighting it uh, to show you that there's all these options and cool stuff you can do with your build order is important and you should think about yeah. it. So I, I, I want to piggyback off that. I, I don't want to argue about Kron or whatever. We bring him up way too many podcast episodes. Yeah, he does not deserve Well, he's an interesting player, he, and the he, fact that he questions the mold is... He, he, he deserves it, but I don't know if our audience deserves it. <laughs> like, um, oh, your, your small, impressionable viewers? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, small viewers. Bro, they're all like 14. I mean, that's my... <laughs> Bruh, you are not 14. <laughs> <laughs> he's basically... But, uh, so, so I do, I do what I say that like, yeah, if you are a, if you are say resource capped or rec point capped or in, in any ways, not gold capped in the early game, uh, then say forfeiting mages to put an early fort in your build order can be legitimate, especially if you're worried about being rushed. Like if you are, for example, end, you are going to be holy point capped because you cannot make more shit off your capital. Now, you can spend that on early temples, and those do give you advantage because you can recruit out of that. You can spend them on labbing indie provinces, and those will give you certain advantages and indie commanders. But you could also spend that money on an early fort because ends sacreds are very efficient for their gold costs they're very gold efficient but you are inherently capped you can't spend all your money so it may be a turn you know five or six fort is the correct play even if it's like in your cap circle because lord knows you're not using all your resources so even even that and then just having that additional layer of security um and that additional production early is is the correct play um yeah, it's all that dynamically going to depend on the RNG of one your the, the provinces you get, two of the map, and three of the cap circle in general. And you can evaluate if it's worth it or not to make that investment. And you should think about it. Because a lot of time people meme about the early game like, oh, my turn takes two minutes, you test this in single player. But, you know, as you're in the actual game, you have a day to do your turn, you know. I'm not saying that the player game slower, but Maybe instead of doing your turn in five minutes, you spend like ten, yeah. and you start planning what the fuck you're doing. Because I mean, usually yeah. I start doing this about the mid game, but one thing I like doing if I get can have the chance to is like you know if the turn rolls at a time you know at night or whatever, just get to like watch the turn, especially if it's like a twenty eight hour turn and not twenty four. You get to watch the turn. You get to, you know, do a little planning, maybe do your chores, like the, the small, uh, like, moving scouts around and stuff like that. And then, you know, you get to sleep on some of the big moves. And then, you, like, the next day you end up scripting them. When you had a, have had a chance to sleep on it and a chance to think about it at work, and then you're like, all right, well, now I have a really good idea of what to do, and I'm not just... Um, yeah, you're not logging into your turn. Yeah, making your mage, making your sacreds that are already on repeat, 
and then you're moving, you're making a few red arrows, you, you put up your basic script, and you're pressing E. You're, you're actually playing this gigantic strategy game that is Dominions, because that is that is why we're playing this niche, stupid strategy game that has all these alternatives. Don't you yes, call my game stupid? You we'll, stupid. We'll get, we'll, get to, we'll get to that in a minute. Yes, uh, you can coast through what Dominion. I, what I... Yeah, so I just want to briefly, because we talk about Diplo a lot, and um, mostly I want to talk about, like, what is your goal w when you play Dominions? And for some people, that is to Diplo. Uh, some people will be, uh, there's a guy named Boz, he's put out a video, and his goal of when he plays Dominions is to play the psychology of people. And he's honest about it. If anything, I'll give him that. I don't agree with, you know... That's not the reason why I play Dominions. I play Dominions because it's this grand strategy game, and I'm, I want to see how they interact on the map and do all this like fancy stuff. And so, you need to think about when you start a game. Do you want to play the game and just win with any means necessary because you're trying to get a win, or do you actually trying to experience the game, which is what me and HP would argue is the point? Because it's, it's cool, you know, if you get a win sometimes, but if you win through a throne rush and no one stops you or if you, you know, win because people hand you the game and you've never fought, I would argue you're not playing Dominions. You're you're just you've technically won, but you're not playing the game. And that's not why I play and that's not what I'm, yeah. I would be looking for. So you should think about why you're playing. And you should ask yourself, what am I trying to experience here? Is it to play the psychology of people and get that you, you know, you're trying to pretend like you're friends and with someone and try to get into their head of like, oh, he doesn't want to attack me. I've been so friendly to him and I've put all this effort into, uh, you know, buttering up to this guy so he's not going to attack me. No, like for me, I want to see that what the other player does in my scripting and I want to have a, a fight. You know, I, I kind of view it like a, like Valhalla. Like you're, you're, you're there for the fight. You're not there for <laughs> the, the, the yeah. moral winning of well, I, I won the game. I guess this is this is a little bit. This is this is more on that topic of why you know why do you play the game than it is on on like Diplo because it's like you know if you it, if you enjoy Diplo you end. might you might play the game because you just like talking to people about the game and about the game state and formulating plans and plots and alliances and stuff like that. But uh, you know like. Like Soren says, that's that's not why I play the game. <laughs> you know, I, I talk enough about this game on the forum and the podcast or whatever. Uh, you know, when I'm playing the game, I want to actually play against people and then see the new tech, see them do cool shit with their units. I want to do cool shit with my units, that kind of thing. So I'll, you know, I'll actively make suboptimal decisions sometimes, diplo wise, because I just don't want to fool with it. Like I, I think I was talking to Soren before the game. There's a lot of times where. Someone will ask me, oh, you're you're near this throne, are you throne rushing? And I'm I'll be like, Yeah, I'm throne rushing. <laughs> what do you expect me to do? It's like the optimal set thing from a winning perspective there would be to just lie your pants off. Like just be like, No, I'm not throne rushing. You should really be worried about this guy halfway across the map because he's a real big threat and it's like it, no, whatever. I'm throne rushing, come at me, come stop me, you know? Good job if you do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what's more exciting, uh, ending the game through a throne rush where you had no opposition and it abruptly ends, or winning the game, you throne rush, you have some epic fights as the game ends. You know, that's like that's a cooler conclusion. And yeah, and I feel like people get lost in this. They're, they right. they are like, oh, I just want to win. I don't care if it's lame as fuck. But it's like, well, yeah. why are you spending the three months to play this game? Well, people, for, people for... Will, yeah, people will say they just want to win. They'll, they'll be like, yeah, I want to win the game. I want to do the optimal play. And people act all in the forums like that's, you know, you're you're wanting to do the competitive thing. But uh, then when you get into it, actually, like, if if that was the case, you'd see a lot more people playing the busted meta build of the week, like, constantly. And people in Dominions generally don't want to do that. They value the creative aspect of the game. So they, they don't want to just win. They want to win on their own terms. They don't want to just... Um, just win typically uh even even though they might say so or might act there that way in other in other ways you know if you if you think about it like yeah dominion's players all of us including mine play would be very very different if it was all about just winning it would be like you take the 
even in tournaments, this would be like you just take the most broken meta thing you can get a hold of and dare people to try to stop you. Um, you know, you take the Satis combo or whatever and, and, and be like, yeah, play Haterade with seven other, other players in the game and they'll, they'll run you over. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, seven, but, but that's what, what's going to happen. No one's going to take, <laughs> if you take the Satis build and people recognize it, they're like, oh, he's probably not going to be a lame-o and take the, the really busted build and then. They get surprised Pikachu face when they take their suboptimal build and you ran your cookie cutter overpowered right. bullshit. And then, and then you know, they're stuck trying to counter your thing right. that's clearly not balanced and have well, fun. It's, it's like, you know, if, if, if people were actually playing to win, they'd, they'd do that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't really begrudge them that if they, you know, if they're, if you're really cutthroat playing to win, I wouldn't begrudge you any of that. Um, but I do feel like there is a little bit of a disconnect where, in certain ways, people will be trying to play to win or are really focusing in on, like, what's the best thing. And then in other ways, they're just totally throwing or, like, not, you know, clearly not playing to win. Like, if I was playing to win every game, you know, I'd like to think I am playing to win tactically on the board. But if I was actually playing to win every game, I would be making sure to do more Diplo and more trading and, like, actually trying to play the players uh in addition to the game uh and, and i don't know because i just that's not interesting to me the actual right, game right, like, like, like people play video games for fun that's, that's right. the crux here yeah you're playing for fun and if the game isn't fun why are you playing right. I, I mean like it, it's just not interesting to me it's like why am i gonna devote months of my time set up all these, like, social conversations, and then the game abruptly ends because I have tricked the other players into never fighting me, and now I have thrown rushed, well, and I have got them to attack everyone else. And it's, some, it's like, some, what some the people, fuck? Some people do think that's fun, and Boss is a lot of them. Yeah, and it's like, it's like, I respect that he's honest about it, but I just fundamentally disagree with him, and I think it's lame. And, it, yeah. you know, if Boss is in my game and we're playing, the first thing I'm going to do to counter him I'm just gonna block him. <laughs> you know, he can't deploy me if I'm not talking to you. Okay, so it's you like know, I'd, I'd probably attack him or something. But uh, yeah, I'd attack him. And it's right. like it's like no, we're we're not gonna talk because I know you're not trying to play the game. You're trying to play like the politics of it. And you're trying to you're you're trying not to interact with it's in it. It's like listen, you can use whatever tools that are your disposable. But at the end of the game day, I still want to play the game, and maybe that right. will contradict with quote unquote winning. But I'd rather have a good fight than to do that. Yeah. And I don't want to do scoutless behavior uh, habits where, you know, I'm presuming that no one's going to lie in our DMs either. It's no, like... No, listen, this is, this is one area where I'll go the exact opposite, be a complete hypocrite, go back on what I'm saying and say, like, I, I you know... Fuck you if it's not fun. You buy some fucking scouts, man. <laughs> like... <laughs> Listen, uh, the fact that no one, a lot of these people who are like really into the psychology, I and mean, it's like, you know, why would I scout when I can use the external well, tools of Discord? For a while. But, like the fact that no one now. gets punished. Yeah, <laughs> like, like people get punished. The... Like, like, I think you need to talk, bring up the psychology. Like, so. Making screenshots and sending all this stuff is not a feature of Dominion's multiplayer. It's something that people have added to the game inherently through playing. So, you know, Ill Winter does not give us the tools and the instant communication to talk to each other. This is an external thing to make the game easier, and, and as such has warped a little bit how the game is played. So, the fact that no one, you know, it, is questioning, like, oh, maybe the screenshot of this guy showing me his map, you know... It's not it's because it's never fabricated, you know, we always reference this Gono guy, but you know, he did this and it's like, <laughs> yeah, why why would you take this stuff seriously? Like right. why am I not gonna buy scouts yeah, and confirm them? Open up a new game, take the uh take the take, take another bless fabricated <laughs> screenshot. Oh yeah, I saw this guy's bless. This is what Sarah makes. Like, like what it, like. I mean everyone has scoutless behavior, they can't fucking yeah, they can't dissuade it. it. To, what it comes down to, like if we really think about it, is like if someone tells you something, they're telling you because they want you to know that information. Right. And whether it's true or not does not apply into their operandi. A classic one, right? 
is not to do anything blatantly falsified, but to say, oh, this guy's been thinking about attacking you, or to say his armies are over here, or he's vulnerable, right. or he's doing, uh, he's, he's greeting. There, there's a lot of, like, like in Sauron's brought out some, like, blatant examples, right? That will get, like, people, like, kind of known in, like, and, you know, people use alts, whatever. But, like, we'll get, if you like playing on your main account, we'll yeah. get people I mean, to, like, people, not people trust you. freak out about Gono, yeah, because he, yeah, he does. But, he takes advantage of the, he, or took, because it's he doesn't even much play anymore. Easier. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's much uh, easier, right, as a player, yeah. to twist the truth slightly for your version of events. Well, right. and, and it's because of metagaming that people well, we, we bring up ults, and that's why they play on them. So you you can't use the metagame example. You have to... If you, I'm not on my main account, and you don't know that, you can't use outside information or past experiences to infer on what I may do. And that's why maybe playing on ults is, so, quote-unquote, optimal. So, uh, what I, uh, I want to get back into... Um... Something Dark Wolf was saying because it was taking us uh, back from the why you play the game. Not that that's not a worthwhile conversation, and on to the like defense against Diplo instead of just getting mad that the fact there is Diplo is like. So I, I do want to, now that we're here, I do want to do this uh, defense against Diplo segment. Like, how do you stop yourself from getting manipulated and Diplo dogged? Uh, if you are in game and you presumably you don't want to be someone's minion in hand right, game. Right. Well, I mean, uh, you have to have you have to have fortitude, mental fortitude. One to not rage out of the game, and some people don't have that. They're like, oh, three people are attacking me. Fuck this game. I'm not playing, right. and I'm checked out. And sometimes that does happen. I think it sucks. Happens happens a lot, but yeah, a lot of times more often will... than not. Instead of looking at the actual situation of three people attacking you, which is often survivable, I know that sounds arrogant, but often 3v1s are survivable and, of course, diplomatic. Arguably, be... sometimes they're actually more survivable than 2v1. Right. Well, that's because generally the people that get. Now, a lot of pe some people might, you know, disagree with us here. A lot of the people who get into these coalitions are the weaker players, and right. the weaker players. Because they are not as good as scripting when they walk at you, it's just easier to deal with them. So, although it's tilting to have multiple players attack you, and although it would, it should seem like, oh, there's three people with three resources attacking me. There's no way I should be able to win this. Well, if they all play like, if they all don't have optimal presence on the map and they're just doom stacking or whatever, that's not that hard to deal with. You right. <laughs> But if you take out all their, their eggs in their basket, well, they're fucked, and right. they're playing so risky, and, and often, they're banking on the dog Oftentimes, you get to devote all your resources against one guy who's... They're actually only really devoting maybe half their resources to the war because it is a 3v1, and so you get to clap one guy, take some of his land, clap the next guy. But uh, I guess getting back to the... Um, Getting back to the, the Diplo aspect of it is like, yeah, diplomatically in a 3v1, you should be um, looking for a way out of the 3v1, but uh, that's not really what I'm talking about when I'm talking about... Yeah, you're, like, you're getting in the weeds. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> but that's not really what I'm talking about when I talk about defense against being Diplo-dogged. What I'm really talking about, like, if you're the guy who's getting 5v1 coalitioned, then it's kind of too late. And what the cure for that, I think Dark Wolf said this before the episode started, the cure for that is actually to have better Diplo yourself and to try to not get 5v1, try to not get it to the point where all your neighbors want to attack you. But the more important skill as a player, I think, is to avoid the situations where you're just acting in someone's interest because they Diploed you and where they are you know, like Dark Wolf was saying, again, you want to think critically about the information given to you. Any time someone is giving you information, it's generally not just because they're your friend, it might be, but generally they, they are giving you information for a reason, and so they are trying to influence you in some ways. Um, so I do want to talk about, like, some of the some of the ways that that can go down and some of the defenses you need to have up against that and i think a big place to start is uh anytime people are talking about who's the like big threat 
if it's not super fucking obvious and it's not someone is imminently thrown rushing like that is all should be absolutely fucking suspicious yeah because yeah and, you just throw uh, it out the window uh, in fact i i often find right yeah. in and this is this is gonna make them sound like a different species in a diplo dog's eyes silence is as damning as a declaration of war oh or absolutely. refusal a of lot. a nap and as someone right as someone who does not like naps as a concept. People are like, you want to be friends? I'm like, yeah. They're like, nap three. I'm like, no. That to them is a sign you are going to attack. I right. just don't like breaking naps if I can avoid it. And so like maybe if I'm still on the edge, I'll, I'll use the excuse I'm finishing expansion first. Right. right. But like ultimately, and you see it in the new game with in-game naps if people have those turned on. Oh, no. Well, I, I refuse to sign yeah, those no, on principle. Yeah, don't sign that shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna. If someone has binding in-game naps, that's like oof. So if just in case you don't know, just to explain this to people, if you have binding in-game naps on, which that you know it's a great option for the AI when you're playing against the AI, but if you have that on versus players and you want players to sign an in-game nap, the in-game naps all they do is they make it so you can't click into each other with your main armies you cannot use rituals that are directly traceable to a player on them and if you ever end up in a battle i believe both your forces it might be attacker routes first but both your forces will route and so you will not fight each other but the way this is exploitable is there are many many spells in the game that attack anonymously even if in prior versions of the game, that anonymous tag just kind of didn't mean anything because you know the only person with the pass to cast the spell cast the spell. But in this, with naps, you end up in a shit situation where, let's say, I send lesser horrors a bunch of your provinces in the magic phase, use scouts to take those provinces, and then those provinces, since I took them from special monsters in the main battle phase, those provinces are mine. And according to the nap, they're mine. And so if you want your land back, you have to wait for that in-game nap to tick down all the way before you can attack me back. So really with the in-game nap system, it's very exploitable. So unless you have some rule external in the game, like you can't you can't exploit that system, you really should just avoid them. <laughs> <laughs> like that, There's just even no serious point Diplo players don't like them because of how how one side of yeah. vulnerable it can make you. Um, now you could play that. Nice you drum. could be the guy who, hey, I have blood astral. I can fucking fuck you up if you, uh, you know, if we do nap fuckery. Lesser horribles? Oh, bro, I don't, bro, I'm gonna nap someone and then just bombard the shit out of them with send lesser horror <laughs> and be like, no, that's not me. No, but you're the only blood ass nation in the game. Well, it's not me. We have a nap. Remember? Fucking hell! And then and then they're like, "You broke our nap." I'm like, "I never signed a nap in Discord. This was an in-game nap. It's a different thing. <laughs> Go take a nap, buddy." I mean, I, I'm sure people oh, are gonna be like, "Like that? I would never allow that." And I would ban anyone who. It's like, well, don't have it on. Yeah, bro. that's that shit. That shit sucks. Or or just literally like you would have to literally ban it in uh in the game thread beforehand and then also get ready for some massive forum argument if there's yeah. two people who can cast potentially cast it like you'd have uh, to go into their to... turns to see who actually did the cast if multiple people can do that well, can yeah and then it, it, it's stupid because if time. someone's if someone's thorn rushing you can't stop them from thorn rushing if you have a nap three <laughs> it's just fucking stupid bro anyway uh Beyond in-game nap, right? The other trick to understanding Diplo Dog is the honest truth. Diplo Dogs, half the time, like, there's two type of Diplo players, right? I feel like this so, is a slurry you keep on using, Diplo Dogs. <laughs> you came yeah, up bro. with a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. Yeah, you did. No, that was Lola who came up with it. I just parroted it. <laughs> no, I just parroted it. it. Uh, listen, like, listen, listen, listen. One of those double D's, right? One of those double D's. Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? No, no, they, no you made it worse. They're, uh, they're divided into two categories. All right? Okay. A homie. Diplo a diplo rat or a Diplo mouse. All right? <laughs> Jesus. All right. Now, now, 
now break it down. What exactly do you think? All right, explain down? yourself. Uh, I'm listening. So, so, so well, I'll, I'll go with the Diplo rats first. Diplo rats. But really, I just wanted to use the word Diplo rat, but like a spider is more applicable. They got a web of strings. They're manipulating people. They're manipulating events. And they're using diplomacy as a tool for their game state, right? right? Generally, they have some character traits that make them anything but, like, the perfect Dominions player. Whether they get offended easily, they can't stand betrayal, or they can't stomach it themselves. But these people are lucid. Aura. Not Aura. What am I saying? Aura. Fuck, what's his name? Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. No, no, give me a second. Aaron. Oh, you're talking about Nick Knight's friend. Okay. Yeah. So people like that, right? They get into these games and they'll talk to you and they'll be your friend. But they ain't just your friend, man. I'll never forget when I heard about how Aaron won a game by buying everyone's thrones. <laughs> well, As the just, weakest nation. This that is literally He said just I'll keep this from your enemy. Uh, on the part yeah, of the opponents. But but yeah, that's okay. scoutless behavior. Don't And then, don't, no and then there's a diplo mouse. Diplo mice? are these these people's weapons of war often they're newer players or if not newer they're not confident right and it's not their fault right i don't want none of this is insulting it's their unless fault. you're aaron aaron i mean this as an insult i want you to know i'm looking into the screen right now but for the rest of you <laughs> like for for new players right it's not it's not their fault necessarily it, it's but they're fault. they're led by the nose generally they're suspicious unless you talk to them and then suddenly they're your best friend they misunderstand a lot of the concepts we've talked about, which makes them very easily directable. And most importantly, they don't build scouts. So uh, These are actually usually your greatest threat. So I want to talk about the, the people that you just called Diplo Mice, which is, I'm not going to use that. It's a terrible <laughs> fucking metaphor. Uh, but that, that's just typical Dominion's player behavior. Uh, it's the one of the Unfortunately. Things that and that's, that's why I kind of want to wanted to talk about defense against diplo doggery not from the perspective of someone who gets 3v1 or 4v1 because at that point your defense is you need to be more diplomatic but from the perspective of a person who is being approached for diplo uh typically you, you know and and the diplomancer is trying to convince you of something or so one of your allies or something is trying to uh, convince you of something because if you are a player and you, maybe you're pretty good, maybe you're not, maybe you're mediocre, or whatever, but you, you keep playing games and you think you're doing things right and you think you're doing things right and you have an ally and then there's someone who's going to threaten to win the game, so you have to coalition them, and then there's another person who's a big threat to the game and you coalition them. And then there's another person who's a threat to the game, and you coalition them, and then your ally wins the game, and that keeps happening <laughs> over and over again, uh, where you keep doing the quote, like the, what you think might be the right play, what what is supposed to be according to the community the right play. You're always coalitioning the big threat who's going to win the game, and then one of your allies wins, and you always lose. Uh, you're getting played, homie. <laughs> like, that's all there is to it. I'm not going to call you gullible, but I am going to say you lack the mental capacity for independent thought. <laughs> right, but it's it's like, if you notice yourself and you think you're having a pretty good game, and, but you keep losing the game and, and, you, and you can't win, and but you think you keep having a pretty good game, not, not like in terms of like, oh, I fought well, which, you know, it, it can happen or whatever, or I lost because I got 3v1, it happens. But like, if you... If you were continually finding yourself allied with people who keep winning games and you don't win those games, then then you are getting played. And what's happening is that you are being convinced that certain player is a big threat to the game, which they may or may not be. But you're being convinced by someone to look in the correct direction to take down their enemies to win the game and not in their direction when they might be the actual big threat definitely related to scoutless behavior because I've noticed when people try to convince me of, you know, players being a big threat, you know, sometimes it's true. Sometimes I scout and it's like, yeah, this player is big, but a lot of times someone will try to big someone up 
And if you have the bare minimum of scouting, you're like, what are you talking about, homie? Like, well, don't well, tell well, him well. that. What are you talking about? Because then you you'll reveal you don't have scoutless behavior. Just let them. Well, well, yeah, no, yeah but you, yeah, but a lot of times you see people. They will say, "Oh, this player is a huge threat," and it'll be some. This is why I objected to Soren's comments earlier. It'll be some extremely thin, you know, rationale where it's like, "Oh, they're blood, and they're really strong in the late game," and you look at them and you're like. Well, sure, but they're twelve provinces. So well, I mean, I there's why this is a why this is a, a a threat that needs to be dealt with. Or someone will say like, "Oh, they ate." You know, this is this is what hap- happened to me. And someone came up to me and said, "Oh, Pythium, they ate Tyrnanog. It's you know, they're the biggest threat. They're 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 you know, it's going to be a problem." And, and I looked at it, and I actually had scouts on the. Um, conflict and Tyrannog was just stealthing Pythium hadn't eaten Pythium had taken a lot of their land but Tyrannog was stealthing an army around and using it to kill siege forces so it wasn't a done war it ended up being going in Pythium's favor and then the person who was trying to tell me that Pythium was a giant threat when I told them I didn't see them as that huge of a threat they started vulturing Tyrannog from the backside before Tyrannog's armies were down, effectively putting them out of the game to Pythium's advantage. So that just goes to show you that, like, a lot of times this big threat talk is either ignorant players being ignorant at you and wanting you to share their ignorance, or it's players trying to give you a runaround, trying to get you to uh, want to take out what they see as a big rival uh, with them, when in reality, if you, you actually look at it, it's like, well had the player, the Satis player, uh, not backstab, stabbed Tyrannog while they were fighting Pythium, when, you know, then Pythium would be a much less relevant player. They would not, they would have been involved in that war for a long time, and if they were a good war target, it would only be because so many of their forces had been caught up. And then, eventually, that Pythium just, like, ended up sitting around in that game and doing fucking nothing. <laughs> I think there's like for I think there's for sure nuance on some of the conversations. Like yes, like I don't know. I kind of disagree with you. Certain nations, like I don't care if they're small, because like they don't need a lot in order to be a problem. So even if like Scalaria is tiny, but they I do have the forts coming along. Like I'm not gonna wait to fucking kill them if they're spamming forts. You know, it, just like if you if Ermor or something like. You, most people kill Ermor uh, in games because they don't like pop kill. And this is a different conversation. But it's the same thing. It's like, I'm not going to wait for the scaling nation to scale regardless of their sc- size. You know, I'm going to apply it based on whatever nation they are. If someone's telling me, oh, I need to kill Pythium, like in your example, like MA Pythium, I could give less of a fuck if they scale or not because they're not as going to be as bad as another nation in the game, like Scalaria. You know, there are outliers in the logic that most players should be aware of that you should not allow to scale. And certain blood, not all blood blade nations, to go back to that, quote unquote, infinitely scale. Certain blood nations scale harder than others. So, you know, MA Zib scaling in blood, I could give less of a fuck about versus, uh, you know, a Micklin sca- scaling in blood. Ozolotls are a real fucking. <laughs> you know, are a real thing that you don't want people to get to, or and it's very easy to get to, too, so maybe I was a little... Yeah, it, so it's like, but the point is, like, I'm not gonna wait for these nations to get to their big thing, and there's nuance between who is scaling and who isn't, so, and you need to be aware of that. So now, think, well, what were you gonna say, Dark Wolf? Well, I was gonna say I remembered the third type of Diplo plan. Oh, no. Oh, what here we it? go. The Diplo. I got to think of an animal. Give me one second. Jesus Christ! You can't. You can't say I've thought of the third one when you. Well, I thought did. Of I thought of the third type, but I just can't think of a title for like an animal that. Describe, fits describe the type. Yeah, the, the, you can tanuki. Tanuki. Oh, ooh. The Diplo... Anteater. <laughs> the Diplo the Anteater. The Diplo Anteaters, right? <laughs> you know, anteaters have very thin minds. 
<laughs> Diplo and Eaters are a rare mixture of the previous two. Right? <laughs> I'm like, it's some actually people, a story. You're an right? actual peanut. <laughs> and so what they do that separates them is they act like a Diplo rat, but they have the effectiveness of a Diplo mouse. They're honestly the worst. I think you're gonna lose people in the terminology. Here. So I, I think I think we're right, gonna listen, have to listen. They they are people, right? That do Diplo to achieve their goals, but their goals are not actually effective. Uh, uh, an example, and the example that jogged my memory of this are elves, right? You know those people that just every time they see elves, they freak out? They're like, the elf nation, the elf nation. Those people will encourage their neighbors to attack them off of this pre preconceived power of elf nations. So in essence, they will convince people or be convinced by people to do something that is not to any of their betterment, betterment or at least not their betterment, due to preconceived notions that have no attachment to the game state. <laughs> that was my case. All right, that's 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 fair. Although I think calling them a diplo anteater is is very stupid. <laughs> um, so Armadillo? I think we're about out. Happy bar? Unfortunately, we're gonna have to like get the, the like resume this topic later because I think we've just about run out of time. You've got to go, right? You were saying, Dark Wolf. So we're probably mm -hmm. going to have to leave. Diplo unfinished and get back to it and, and and give you some real information instead of just being mad that Diplo exists. But <laughs> I'm, I'm not mad. I'm I think I explained my stance. <laughs> okay. I, as long as people want to use it as a tool, it's just not why I play Dominions. Yeah. And I respect people who are in the weeds of it. I just think it's rather lame if like your game plan is I want to mentally distraught this player into not playing so I have an easier well, easier cool. avenue of taking their land because I don't I, I don't value I that. Remember when you did that to us. So so it's like it, people recognizing someone's very good at the game but has weak mental. Um, I had a conversation recently about this, so I'm bringing it up. Like attacking someone's mental because you know that's easier to do than like playing against them. I think is small dick energy, and oh, uh, I don't recommend it. But like, I just think like, hey man, it's, like it's a way of win that's... winning the game. But like, are you actually just playing to win? Are you are you playing to win by being a bad yeah. sport because you know someone ha is is better is, than you? Yeah, or, or, or is, is tilt is uh like tilts out easily? Like I yeah, I probably tilt out more easily now. I used to be pretty pretty um tilt resistant, but and I've never tilted out. I I have tilted out of games Holy... before. I definitely. I Dark definitely Wolf. tilted you know out. Who's the easiest to tilt out? You tilt out, Johnny. You tilt out of games you're winning, Dark Wolf. You're yeah, fucking terrible. That does happen. That's <laughs> you... not tilting out. That's just like losing interest. <laughs> Dark Wolf, you have. I mean, it's part of the I same. Thing. Lose, weak, I don't you have even weak lose mental interest. no matter what. You I don't even MR2. lose interest. The I, I, better I'm doing, the lazier I get, and then suddenly MR. stuff gets tight, and I like start sitting for two hours <laughs> editing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. No, 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 all right, all right. Good, good night. Yeah, we're, we are having to call it to a close here. We'll have to resume this conversation later because I think it's good. But uh, Oh, and you know what was wrong? Out of time. Well, I don't know if you've ever heard, but there's a, a band called Tool, and they got some good music. Uh, so it's not even an insult anymore. Oh, wait. Dark Wolf. Check this out. Yeah. Picanye West. <laughs> I hate. Bro, I searched. <laughs> I searched. I searched the word "dog" in my phone for photos to go look at a picture of my old dog, and I just had a bunch of foxes. <laughs> All right. Bye. Good night. Uh, that was your uh, Dominion Six Rise of the Podcaster, your premier Dominion Six podcast. I don't know when we'll be able to record next or what it'll be about. Hopefully, we'll get to finish up the Diplo conversation without too much overlap or uh, just continual bitching. <laughs> that was it. Uh, see y'all next time.